With steam trains, a World War II hero, bombs, and a tenacious link to P.T. Barnum, we're on another walk, this time in Rushcliffe Country Park in Nottingham, Shire. Well, they promised us rain at 12 o'clock. It's about 20 past. And it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cold rain. Yeah, it is as well. So we can't uh, have sunshine and blue skies every time we go for a walk. But, uh, but where... mud. Yeah, we usually <laughs> have but mud. mud. Yeah, we find mud. Where are we? We're at Rushcliffe Country Park. I nearly said Ruddington Country Park because there was a lot of kerfuffle from local residents when it was set up as a country park because they wanted it to be called Ruddington, which is the name of the village, just that way. <laughs> so, uh, not an ideal walk for us because it's a country park, it's a Sunday and it's busy, but, but it's close to home again. It's it what, about four or five miles from home, Yeah. just on the south side of uh, Nottingham. And so, see where we get to again. Yep. It looks like they're uh, been laying hedges recently. It looks like it's been all freshly cut. So yes, yeah, so some of the old traditions of hedge laying coming back or being used anyway. Um, this is freshly done. And we've left one or two larger ones. make a nice hedge. It's obviously a, a nature trail. There's uh, A nosy dog. A nosy dog. But lady bays. Lady bays? Lady no, birds. Lady, lady, lady birds. You, is that your thing? You're going to be saying lady bay in every video you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lady birds everywhere. So uh, making a trail for the children. And we found the mud. Well, I can't resist. <laughs> in your, oh, you've not got your new boots on. <laughs> Something that this place has got, <laughs> which ours will fail at miserably, is this. <laughs> Shall we give them a go? Yeah. <laughs> mm. If your dogs do agility, don't laugh at us now. Come on. You missed that one. This way. Here. Come here. Ray. 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 Oh, this way. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Rum. Come on. 
Good boy. Come on, Nab. Nab. Go. This way. Here. Right. Come on. This way. That Nab. Here. Come. On. Here. Come on, then. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Hey. Nab. Come on. Here. Here. <laughs> I've done it once. So I'm not doing it again. Well, I think that one's a uh, failure. Yeah. Torbed it, it. Yeah, rummed it. He's doing it the backwards way. <laughs> <laughs> what about weaving? Can you weave? Oh, that's just through one. That's cheating, to, uh, Nab. Can you do it, Keith? No, not with my <laughs> hips. Oh, that was good, Keith. I missed that. Good boy. Come on, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. So, through here. Do you want to show them how it's done? No, it's wet and muddy. <laughs> oh. Go on, Bay. Go on, then. Bay likes climbing more. Hey, good girl. Now, Rum. for the ultra test, I think this one might fail. Rum. I can't see this one working. Lab, come here. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Come here. Come on. <laughs> He's not on your Nelly. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Good girl. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Good girl. Come on. Not where she does it. <laughs> Agility? We'll give it a miss. <laughs> Thought Border Collies were supposed to be good at it. <laughs> it's not certainly not in bread though, is it? <laughs> Why try the hard way when there's an easy way? Oh. The country park is a nice wide open space. A little bit of woodlands. Lots of open lands, some of it rough. So a bit more manicured. As I said in the introduction, quite a lot of history about the place. In the 1800s it was all farmland. Had a brook running through it, which was quite handy later on. So this was the uh, area of Fowmer Hill, Fowmer Hill, was used uh, as a landing strip during the Great War, the First World War. Um, nine, between 1916 and 1917, something like that, for the landing strip for a um, number 38 squadron. But, uh, I don't, don't know, it seems a long way from the battlefields of Europe to be landing here, unless this is where they were based before they were shipped out. I don't know, but uh, we'll see whether we can find a bit more history on that at some stage. Landscape looks a bit different now because when they were building the country park, they actually raised the hill by seven meters. Seven meters, yeah. Um, don't know why. <laughs> Just landscaping, I think. But uh, yeah, they raised it seven meters. And the plaque here, just dedicated to the memory of. Get border collies <laughs> dedicated to the people who flew here to all the units of personnel based here but then from 1930 your namesake yes it was uh, used as a landing field for a private air uh, pilot aircraft owner 
uh, Harold Ashworth. So there's a family con connection there. I don't know how far back, but uh, obviously the Ashworth family. Um, and then he joined the RAF in 1939, I think it says, um, to become a fighter pilot uh, in the Second World War. By 1942, become a squadron leader. But unfortunately, in 1942, he was returning to, from a sortie over France and was shot down over the south coast. He was posthumously awarded the uh, Distinguished Flying Me uh, Cross, where it was cited that he'd shown immense energy, courage and inspiring leadership. So, Ashworth, Ashworth, do do some good. <laughs> <laughs> In 1940, the War Department took this site on and it became a bomb factory and munitions store. It employed over 4,000 people from the local village of Runnington and further afield, Nottingham and the other villages around. It's been quite a sight. It was due, really due to the uh, location of the railways, wasn't it? It was, yeah. There's a railway close by, um, so they could ship a lot of stuff in for making the bombs, including the gunpowder, the shell casings, and there's also a water supply which was needed. It became quite a village. Um, it got doctor's surgeries, uh, living a common well, well, there's 200 buildings yes. on this site, yeah. so it was quite a, quite a factory. After the wars, this area was used for uh, burning some of the munitions, stuff like cordite and some of the explosives were destroyed here. So it was a, I imagine that was a site and a big fire going off at some stage. The site was used for the next 41 years, including a place where they held auctions to sell military vehicles. It was such a popular place to come and buy those vehicles that the, each auction was advertised in the national press. And they used to have hundreds and sometimes thousands of people turning up depending on what they got on, got for sale. The country park's popular with locals and they come from miles around to be honest to enjoy the open space been cooped up in the city all week. There are cycleways, walkways, as you've already seen, special exercise places for dogs, handy puddles for drinking from. And plenty of well-maintained paths. We're now walking down Memorial Walkway. The trees have been planted with plaques at the base of them for people who've enjoyed the park or relatives have thought it was a nice place to keep a memory of them. It's not our usual kind of walk really, is it? No, it's not at all really, but uh, it's an interesting walk. There's quite a bit of history to the place. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's not what we normally would be uh, doing. On a wet day, yeah, getting the dogs day. out. And you don't need to go far. Oh. Miles. No. But we're not finished yet. A bit more to tell you. walking 
adults who want to have a different type of exercise are well catered for. Gym equipment and nice playgrounds for the kids. We made this area dog lead, dogs on lead area. So yeah. the whole of the rest of the um, park that dogs are, can run free. That's fair. It's, uh, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad at all, really. It's, it's well thought out, isn't it, for everyone. We previously mentioned that the railway played a big part. So we previously mentioned that uh, the railway played a big part in delivering shells and gunpowder. And that railway is here, just to the side of what is now the park. It still exists, as you can see, and it's now known as the Great Central Railway, Nottingham Limited. And these days it's a heritage railway. You can have steam rides here most weekends through the spring, summer and autumn, some Santa specials. and. It's mostly steam trains, and I did say there was a bit of a tenuous link to Barnum. This railway holds and keeps some Barnum carriages, which is so called because they're the design that Barnum used when he was transporting his circus and animals when he was touring the UK. I told you it was tenuous. <laughs> and there's one thing I'm hoping. I'm hoping the Heritage Museum's open. <laughs> A, and a, a cafe there where yeah. we can have a coffee. There's always talk about, that has been for years, that this they want to extend the line here to join it up with the one at Loughborough and make it a, a really decent uh, length uh, track. There is, the line still joins up with British Gypsum, which is a few miles down the track. Um, so carriages still do travel along from parts of this line. But the HS2, it isn't. <laughs> it's more like the Nottingham 12. <laughs> Coffee! Somewhere. It's the car park, which is a lot emptier than when we arrived, before the rain really started. It's a pain display, but it's a pound for all day. And you really could spend a full day here doing different bits and pieces, including the walks. in the leaves. Get into a rub in. Rub in. Get in. Come on, Rob. Come on. Get in, Rob. Come on. Come on, dude. Good boy. Lady Bay. Still needs a little lift. 
Come on, you. Oh. <laughs> Oops, it is. Come on. She said, We wanted outtakes. Mind your feet. Mind okay. your feet. So not only is this a heritage museum for the railways, it's also it also houses a bus collection as well. Yeah. Barton was the local bus company, or one of the local bus companies, based became, over at um, Long Eaton Way. Became Trent Barton, didn't it? Yeah. Something about old buses, isn't there? Restoration being done on the top deck on that one. They had a nice shape, old buses, didn't they? They did. One of my first memories is going on a coach with my mum. Well, not a coach, it was a bus, an old bus. Just a few miles, just to visit my uncle in another village. And the seats were always more springy than they are on modern buses. You just bounce up and down on them. And I know my train's not, but I can tell you this is a class 46. Because it says so here. And also in the number. 46. Class 46. <laughs> Maximum speed of 90 miles per hour. Derby built. Hmm. Yeah, these are what I always knew as Deltics. Yeah. We used to, at school, we used to uh, have a railway running along the back of the uh, school and as youngsters we all had uh, train spotting books. So I wonder if I've seen this one going through Warrington at some stage. When you stand beside them it makes you realise just how big they are. Doesn't yeah. It? Yeah. You wouldn't get wouldn't want to get in front of that when it's travelling at ninety miles an hour. No. There's a charity based here as well called the and I am reading this GCR Rolling Stock Trust. So that's based here, and they own the third largest after the Bluebell Railway and the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. The third largest collection of rolling stock known in the, to exist in the UK including those Barnum carriages which we told you about before. And from the big ones, we have a miniature railway here as well. So. Running down to the station up the other end. Cheers. Well, actually, we're cheating now because we've moved on. And we're having another coffee. 
So a proper coffee. Cheers. Yes, he was. Come on, this way. Another one for the outtakes. <laughs> and by 1942, has become a squadron leader. Um, he stopped going round. I'm trying to make it interesting. Oh. Outtakes again. <laughs> I was doing that again, but good. No, you've been a good friend. There's nothing that's thick and thin.